Hello, shooters. My name is James Soule, and welcome back to the American Trigger Sports Network TV show. Today, we're taking you out to the fourth annual winter biathlon, which took place at Mammoth Mountain in California. We're going to put you on the skis, put a rifle in your hands as we watch the action. Uh, we've had some adverse weather, as you can tell. We've had about uh, five feet of snow in the last five days, probably nine to ten feet up at the biathlon range, which is at 9,000 feet. Today we had some serious snow and wind and we had to change the event from a biathlon to just a ski race. And so my idea was to build biathlon from the bottom up from a junior development program uh, here in Mammoth Lakes. Uh, but also build it from the top down. Uh, Mammoth Lakes uh, at this time is very popular among endurance athletes with our eight to 9,000 feet training range. And so my idea was to attract some elite athletes to train here at altitude and build the program from the top down and at the same time have that trickle effect with our junior athletes building from the bottom up. Everybody came out, regardless of the weather. The kids were out in droves, and I'm talking from four-year-old kids to, you know, 15 years old, and we had all age categories, all levels of experience, and everybody was out there in the storm, weathering the conditions, and having a great time. I'm Kathy Copeland, and I am the executive director of a small nonprofit called Disabled Sports Eastern Sierra. And we're an adaptive ski school. We're year round, and we're happy to have had 12 participants at this year's biathlon. And we just finished, we just came in off the race course and saw um, a bunch of people up on the podium, and it was a very, very exciting day. will be Lanny Barnes, the first place winner in the ladies division. We'll be right back. Today, Saturday, tomorrow, there's another day of racing where we expect to have the elite athletes, the Olympic athletes, uh, the National Guard athletes racing in the, the big boy, big girl category uh, tomorrow, Sunday, for, for the uh, winter biathlon.
history. Grew up shooting first and then she took on the steam after the diathlon. Stadium is at 9,000 feet of elevation. So me, I live at sea level, so I'm having trouble just speaking and uh, breathing. And these guys get on their skate skis and take off, and then they're racing up and down uh, over the track through the course, and then they have to stop and regain their composure, bring their heart rate down, aim, fire five times, and continue on. And this, this is really, really exciting stuff. All right, shooters, we're going to bring on Lanny Barnes directly from Durango, Colorado, to talk with us. Hi, Lanny, how are you? Hi, James, how are you? Uh, good, how's the weather there today? Oh, it's a little rainy, but uh, hopefully it's snowing in the mountains. Uh, hopefully. <laughs> you know, I, I get a great kick out of this because of all the sports we cover, pistol, rifle, shotgun, biathlon, biathlon's the only one where people say, gee, I hope it's snowing. Uh, yeah, you know, without the snow, we uh, we definitely don't function. Yeah, so you we... don't have a sport, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, let me let me start off by answering some of the uh, asking some of the more obvious questions. Actually, uh, as biathlon teams go around the world, would you say the USA is a young team? Oh, definitely. Yeah, I mean, uh, biathlon is a relatively new sport to the U.S. and uh, our team is, is just starting to reach their physiological peak and and uh, we're really excited about how our team's been doing the last couple of years and really looking forward to the 2014 Olympics in Russia. Okay, well, well for those of us who probably don't know as much about biathlon as you do and, and I'm one of those actually, uh, how long has the U.S. team been competing in the Olympics? Uh, they've compete, been competing since the 80s, uh, maybe a little bit before that for the men. The women started around the 80s, and uh, yeah, we, we've been gradually getting better and better every year, and hopefully sometime soon we're going to get a medal in the Olympics. Okay, and how did you get started in biathlon? Oh, uh, well, actually, kind of by accident. Um, my dad, he, he taught us how to hunt and fish at a young age, and we're really into the outdoor activities and things like that, and really love soccer, and uh we're looking for a way to stay in shape for soccer during the winter and found biathlon and thought that gun and run were, was exactly what, you know, our kind of thing. So we kind of fell in love with it. Okay. When you went to Mammoth, did you find any of the conditions being different as far as uh, course conditions from where you train to Mammoth? You know, Mammoth was amazing. The, the volunteers, spectators, it, it made it very similar to a European race in that there was tons of people. Uh, for a lot of the s competitors, I know some of my teammates that were there, they weren't quite used to the altitude. But for me, coming from Colorado, it felt just like home. And, and uh, yeah, it was just an exciting event. Hold that thought. We'll be right back with more on this because there's, there's more to tell.
you know the conditions out there were phenomenal the they put on a great event and the conditions were fair for all competitors and and uh yeah we hope hope to head back out there again for another event Yeah, I would think that when you're training, uh, Lanny, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you probably train at different altitudes because do you really know what altitude you're... Well, yeah, I guess you do. If you're going to to an event, that's probably one of the things that you uh, look for is where is it it going to be, what's the altitude going to be. Is that part of your training? Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, training at altitude is is really beneficial for the heart and lungs, and and, uh, we do a lot of training throughout the year at altitude. A uh, majority of our competitions are at low altitude, but we do have a few that are at altitude. So when we, we actually do go to those competitions, it's good to be prepared and, and know how the body is going to adapt to that kind of uh, uh, altitude. Now, l- let me ask you this, though. Uh, there was another question that came up, and I watched the interview that you did with the crew in Mammoth. And you talked about your heart rate being around 160 or 180. We train from uh, April until November. That's our training season. And it consists of a lot of roller skiing, running, biking, and we combine that a lot with shooting to uh, practice shooting with a high, with a high heart rate. Um, in general, we like to come into the shooting range with a heart rate around 160 to 180 beats per minute. So we have to practice a lot to be able to control our shot while we're while we're in the shooting range so tell me how you train to keep your heart rate and being able to shoot at that level you know it takes a lot of training to be able to and confidence to be able to shoot with your heart rate around 180 beats per minute because when you're when you're at that level at a race pace uh a level with your heart rate like that it it's really uncomfortable so you have to be able to train your body to relax in those conditions and be able to to hone your skills and focus on on a, a skill sport basically of shooting and uh yeah just a lot of practice of of really pushing yourself into the shooting range and uh shooting with a really high heart rate and um breathing really hard so yeah it just takes a lot of time and practice yeah and i've talked to a lot of athletes in biathlon and many of them do not really have a shooting background and when I read about you, you actually have a hunting background, and uh, you're very familiar with weapons. Uh, do you mm-hmm. think that gives you an edge over some of the other competitors? You know, we like to think so. Uh, definitely in the in the shooting side, the shooting aspect. Uh, we grew up shooting and hunting. We competed in small bore small bore prone competitions, and and are very familiar with rifles, pit, pistols, shotguns. You know, every kind of firearm there is and and it's definitely helped us with our shooting uh my both my sister and i are some of the best shooters in the world in in biathlon and and uh you know it it took us a while to pick up the skiing but we're we're gradually getting there and and uh yeah i think it definitely to learn those skills of shooting it takes it takes many years of practice to be able to to get to that level in shooting right especially with a heart rate as high as 160 or 180 and of course that's the reason why uh, three gun interests you, and that you actually started to participate in with your sister because that heart rate i don 't know if it 's one hundred and six or one hundred and eighty, but it is aerobic, oh, yeah. <laughs> and you do have to move around a little bit <laughs> oh yeah, definitely for three gun it's it 's sprint here, sprint there and and shoot and so it's it 's basically kind of a a mini biathlon in that sense where where you 're sprinting from one point to the other and 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 still and still shooting so it 's it's a pretty exciting event for us, and we're pretty excited about getting into it. Okay. Now, another question that's always asked me, and, and that is, uh, if we go away from the shooting side for just a minute and we go out to the track side, the, the actual competition on skis, um, we kind of all understand that balance and speed, uh, that's very important to, with what you're doing out there. But what are some of the nuances uh, that most observers don't understand? Uh, I mean, there must be things that are going on there that we don't see. Mm-hmm. In in biathlon, it's it's a it's a mental game. The majority of the the race, you're always uh, debating with yourself and your competitors uh, back and forth in your head. You know, thinking should I should I go for it? Should I back off? Uh, do I need to make my move here? Um, you know, and that also that transition from the skiing to the shooting, you need to change your mindset over from being a skier to, to being a shooter. So there's always things constantly going on in your mind and, and uh, biathlon is definitely a mental battle of, of sorts and, and uh, 
it's it's really important to be able to to be strong mentally in in the sport. Yeah, I, I think what maybe a lot a lot of folks don't understand is how much strategy is involved. I mean, you're you're following behind a competitor and you're gaining on that competitor, and at some point you make that decision to pass. And you mm -hmm. base that decision on what? Well, a lot of things. How you're feeling. Uh, you watch your competitor, see how she's feeling. If if she looks tired, uh, things like if if you're coming into the shooting range, are, are you confident in coming in harder than 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 your competitor and and being confident enough to hit your targets at that speed and and you know so many so many different variables like wind and and temperature and all those things play a role in the, the shooting and the skiing. So you're constantly analyzing all those different things while you're out there competing. Right. So, you, so you're, you're, it is a mental game. I don't, I don't know any shooting game that isn't a mental game, frankly. But when you okay. add the fact that you're doing a skiing event as well, and it's a time, speed kind of a thing, folks, we'll be right back. Susan Dunkley. Um, I've been, I'm from uh, Craftsbury, Vermont, and I've been competing in biathlon for three years. I originally started as a cross-country skier. It's a sport that I did with my family from the time I was about two years old. My name is Riley Gessling. I'm from Esco, Minnesota. I'm 19 years old. I'm taking this year in training with the Maine Rare Sports Center. Um, I'm on the U.S. Junior World Championship team this year, and um, Biathlon has really been great for me because I've been able to uh, travel a lot, see a lot of places I wouldn't have otherwise. My name is Wynn Roberts and I'm from a small town called Battle Lake, Minnesota. And I uh, started Biathlon when I was 12 years old. And met some uh, Olympians in uh, the state that I grew up in. And they inspired me and because of them and uh, their excitement for this sport, I uh, continued to main the Olympic team and that's what I'm here for, is for the uh, kids that are out here trying the trying back home. Finish right now our tenth woman today in the first wave of a new two-time Olympian out of Durango, Colorado. She's known as Lanny Oakley for her shooting. Lanny Barnes, well done. Had to think of everything out here today. This is an awesome place. It's great to be here. This enthusiasm is better than Olympics. You guys are awesome, please. Wow. 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 Just uh, when it said the same thing, the spectators. What about the altitude? We're at about 9,000 right, feet. Yeah. Was the skiing yeah. tough out there? You know, it's, it's tough, but I'm from Colorado, so it's a lot similar. Eight. But uh, I love this. Finisher. It's nice to finish. Hopefully, we'll get more flatlanders up here. And, and, Two-time Olympian, what are your aspirations, uh, obviously, for 2014 in Russia? Uh, definitely want to make the Olympic team and hopefully bring home one of the first medals ever for U.S. Yeah. There you go. Could we get a big yee-haw? Lanny Barnes, Lanny Oakley, congratulations. Mammoth Brewing Company, ice cold beer, baby. Oh, yeah. Uh, well um, the, for the the event in Mammoth, it was just a special event. They they had the women and men together in the same group, but normally we wouldn't be competing against each other. Ah, oh, okay, okay. So so it was set up structured differently in Mammoth, and the Mammoth is, is a great area. I know that we've all enjoyed going there. Uh, of course, I'm not a skier, but uh, or a biathlon participant, but it's a beautiful place to go. Um, and you were very happy, no doubt, with the course uh, and, and everything the way it was set up. Oh yeah, they, the I think it's Mike Karch is the one that set up the the event there, and and uh, the spectators and and the volunteers they did an amazing job. Um, the course was awesome. It was the the backdrop and the setting was phenomenal. It just it's kind of one of those venues and places that that make you want to go back as many times as you can. Because I think they're going to do that again next year. Will you be there? 
Oh, definitely. Yeah, we'll, uh, and I'm going to bring my twin sister too, so we'll definitely be back next year. Okay, that'll be a lot of fun. All right, well, thank you, Lanny. I appreciate you uh, stepping up today and answering a few of those tough questions. I'm not sure they were tough, but they were, according to my computer, I had many of them, and I thank you for helping us through that. We'll probably see you again. Sure, thanks. It was nice meeting you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. James, it's been great working with you, and thanks so much for uh, supporting this event. Mammoth winner by Optalon, top three women, Lanny Barnes, Durango, Colorado, Susan Dunkley Barton, Vermont, Carolyn Tiernan, Mammoth Lakes, California. Congratulations. Top three overall, Wynn Roberts, Raleigh, Gessling, Mark Shepard, congratulations.